You're living in a day when people have instant access to adult websites, pornographic pictures, and can view these things without embarrassment because it is in the comfort of their own home. They don't just have to go to the store and buy it anymore. It's in the comfort of their own bedroom. And to young men growing up, this seems like just fun and games. However, there is something dark and evil about these things. And many times the fact that a young man is viewing pornography is laughed at and it's made as a joke. And Proverbs 14.9 says, Fools make a mock at sin. And if the devil can convince you that something is funny or fun, then he can blind you into thinking it is harmless fun. In the book of Numbers, in Numbers 33.52, it says, Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures. So the Lord wanted them to destroy their pictures. Why would the Lord want them to destroy the pictures? Because there is no new thing under the sun. Men had pictures depicting something sinful even back then. And this is also in the book of Numbers. Sam Gipp said it is the scariest book in the Bible because... This book, this book of Numbers, shows you how good God is at keeping record of things. Did you know every time a man viewed pornography, it was logged down on his record in heaven? And there's some record somewhere showing everything, every site that you've ever been to. But the devil shows you a pretty woman and subtly tricks a man into viewing evil pictures. Today it is motion pictures. Eve saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes in Genesis 3. But in Genesis 2, 9, the Bible lets us know that the trees, all the trees God made that were permitted to eat off of were also pleasant to the sight. It wasn't just the one they weren't supposed to eat. Just like many men watch pornography to view things that are pleasant to the sight, even though the Lord has already given them a wife who is pleasant to the sight. Mark 5, or Matthew 5, 28 says, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Proverbs 27, 20, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. God gave you the ability to see and you abuse it by looking at things you aren't supposed to look at. But a man gets so far down this road of looking at evil images and pictures and video that he can't even think straight anymore. He begins to be hardened and desensitized, given over in his mind to perversion, to where he can't stop lusting and desiring something that he shouldn't have and that he can't have. And that's what it is. It's all just some big fantasy. Second Peter 2.14 says, Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. The serial killer Ted Bundy admits before his execution the dangers of pornography and how pornography helped motivate his crimes. He was desensitized. He was past feeling. It's not just something a young boy does when he gets to be around 12 or 13 years old. It's a dangerous, dark, and evil thing. What do you think drives the sex trafficking and the por uh, child pornography? It's men who have viewed so much pornography that looking at a good-looking woman no longer satisfies them. They begin to desire something more forbidden. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So you can become hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. They are hard, and the devil made them that way through deception. It started out with them being a young boy, maybe, looking at something on HBO or Cinemax or Showtime, and their secret obsession began to get more perverted and rotten. 1 Timothy 4.2 shows your conscience can be seared. Ephesians 4.19 talks about who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness 
to work all uncleanness with greediness. That lasciviousness is a irregular indulgence of animal desires. They get to a point where they are like an animal. They are past feeling. They're not ashamed. Iniquity is their ruin, and because iniquity abounded in their life, their love for people around them waxes colder and colder. It's not natural for a man to go out in public and grab a child or a baby out of the arms of the baby's mother so that he can commit wicked sexual acts on the child. It started with him looking at something on TV or a movie or a magazine or a computer screen, and then he has a long process of wicked, perverted thinking. You say, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't get it i wouldn't get that far but you just let the opportunity present itself it's all about the opportunity presenting itself and the devil comes your way with the te that temptation and that desire to fulfill whatever your flesh wants and then the opportunity presents itself you'll see something you like you'll desire it and then you'll take it just like aiken in Joshua 7, 21, it says, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he saw it, he coveted it, and then he took it. The opportunity presented itself. It's like a man was recently in McDonald's. He spotted a young girl going in the bathroom. He rapes the girl, and they found that the man was a viewer of child pornography. The man, he, the man said he's seen the girl go in the bathroom, and the opportunity presented itself. I bet the man probably wasn't going there that day thinking that that's what was going to happen, and that's how his... Pretty much life was going to end because he's in prison now. But he was probably thinking evil thoughts on his way there just to go get him something to eat. But then the opportunity presented itself. And he had already put all of these sinful images and had all this lust and sinful desires. And the more sinful images he put in his brain, the more sinful thoughts he was able to have but it gets to a point where all they care about is pleasure. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 6, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 12 shows us that men have pleasure in unrighteousness. Pornography just makes you want something that you aren't supposed to have and that you can't have. It is covetousness. And the Bible tells us about that. It says in Exodus... 2017, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor, thy, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And, and if the devil can get a man ad addicted to pornography, then he can distract him from getting saved. He can ruin his marriage, ruin his kids, ruin his reputation. If he is saved, he can ruin his testimony. But here's some scary, disturbing truths about pornography. Listen to this. When having sex or watching pornography, dopamine is released into a region of the brain responsible for emotion and learning, giving the viewer a sense of sharp focus and sense of craving. Like, I have got to have this thing. This is what I need right now. And it supplies a great sense of pleasure. And the next time the viewer gets the itch for more sexual pleasure, small pockets of dopamine are released in the brain, telling the user, remember where you got your fix last time, and go there to get it. That's what happens, what's going on in your brain. Uh, then this other thing, norpinephrine, nor, norpinephrine, can't pronounce that word, but this is also released, creating alertness and focus. 
It is the brain's version of adrenaline. It tells the brain something is about to happen and we need to get ready for it. Uh, sex or pornography also triggers the release of oxytocin and vasopressin. These hormones help to lay down the long-term memories for the cells. They bind a person's memories to the object that gave him or her the sexual pleasure. The body releases endorphins, natural opiates that create a high, a wave of pleasure over the whole body. Uh, after sexual release, serotonin levels also change, bringing a sense of calm and relaxation. So, when men view pornography, all these things happen. And all these things further addict the person. And when they look at pornography, they experience surge after surge of dopamine in the brain. The brain eventually fatigues, stopping the production of dopamine, leaving the viewer wanting more, but unable to reach a level of satisfaction. As a result, everyday pleasures stop causing excitement, and the viewer seeks out more novel, more intense pornography to get the same high that he had before. And this imbalance in the brain leads to many problems. Impotence with your spouse, frequent masturbation with very little satisfaction, anxiety, fatigue, lack of motivation, inability to concentrate, and escalating taste for more bizarre or novel porn. That's scary. But notice it said... The viewer seeks out more novel, more intense pornography. See, the more sinning you do, the worse sin you're going to get into. For example, before I was saved, I listened to bad music. The more bad music I listened to, the more sinful music that I got into, the harder the music had to be. It's like that with any sin. But it's not just pornography there's also fornication Paul warns so much against fornication and other men in the Bible do the same but Paul over and over and over again warns us against this sin fornication is a sexual act with any person that you aren't married to Acts 15 29 says that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if you keep yourselves ye you shall do well fare you well Jude 7 even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh or set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire it is a scary sin you can give yourself over to it the desire for it seems as if you can't escape it, even though you can. And if you commit fornication, you're in some wicked company. Two of the most wicked groups in the Bible are said to have committed this sin. In the book of Jude there, the angels that left their first estate and the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Two very wicked groups. And then in verse 8 of the same book, the book of Jude, it says, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. What does pornography make you? It makes you a filthy dreamer, and you'll defile the flesh. And when you go to bed with a woman you aren't married to, then you're going to be with all the people she's been with. Fornication is a very disgusting sin. Uh, men who aren't even Christians or even care about morality say that when you go to bed with a person, part of their DNA stays with you for the rest of your life. You say, well, I love the person that I'm committing this sexual sin with, but that doesn't make it okay, and he will end up hating you. With Amnon... That was the story when Amnon took his own sister and forced her. After he committed the act, it says he hated her. And 2 Samuel 13, 15 says, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. 
so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. So men are wicked. They will take advantage of you, and then they are done with you. Says he hated her. He told her to leave. But now in terms of a Christian committing fornication, it's a lot worse than a lost man committing fornication. Because First Corinthians 6.13 says, Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. When you commit fornication, you are abusing something that God gave for a man and his wife. And 1 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18 says, And God hath, ra hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know you not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. He says flee fornication. If you're a Christian, your body is not your own. And you need to flee fornication, run from it. Just like Joseph ran from Pharaoh's wife. The manliest thing to do in that situation is run. You weren't strong enough to handle it. Just like Samson wasn't, David wasn't. And you aren't either. It's a deadly sin. First Corinthians 10, 8 says, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them also committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. It's a deadly sin. It's a work of the flesh. Galatians five nineteen. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Ephesians 5, 3, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Colossians 3, 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. 1 Timothy 4, 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Over and over, you're warned against the sin of fornication. And if you're watching pornography, you are fornicating with yourself in a computer screen. And the more a man indulges in these sexual sins, the further down the road of per perversion he will go into more and more and natural things. And <clears throat> there is testimony after testimony of men who don't claim to be a sodomite but ended up watching sodomite porn because watching a woman no longer thrilled them anymore or watching tranny porn because a good-looking woman just didn't excite them anymore. They had to get into more bizarre and strange pornography to, to get that same high that they used to get. But it's not just pornography. It's not just fornication. There's other unnatural sexual sins. And homosexuality is another level of sin. Not only are they fornicators, but they are committing an abomination by committing sexual acts with the same sex. In Romans 1, 26 through 27, it says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat so nature itself tells you that going after the same sex is an abomination ask the average lost man on the street what he thinks about it and he will even tell you it's nasty. The news makes you think everyone is for it. And that a lot of people... And that there's more people for it than there is against it. And I'm not denying there is a lot of people for it. But you ask the average person on the street. They're going to say it's nasty. 
because it's not only against God, but it's just so unnatural. How does God feel about it? Leviticus 18.22 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. 1 Timothy 1, 9 through 10, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. That is the sodomite, the homosexual. He defiles himself with mankind. And they want to teach the kids about LGBT history. They should start with Sodom and Gomorrah. They should tell them how it is never talked about in a positive light in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's the sodomite. So pornography, adultery, sodomy all lead to more bizarre and weird sexual sin, sins like bestiality. Leviticus 18.23, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. You say, well, that's not... You say, well, I'm doing these sexual sins, and it's not led me to that yet. It may have not yet, but you're on that road. It's a... You know, it just... You get worse and worse and worse. Genesis 6, 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The Lord had to destroy most of the animal life because man even corrupts the animals, because sexual sin leads to more weird and bizarre sexual sin. Another thing is mixing violence with sexual content leads to a twisted, perverted mind. Why do you think there is so much rape? There was one a serial killer who he started out watching dirty movies. And he watched a movie that had someone murdering somebody right before a sexual scene. And he was constantly rewinding it back to watch that sexual scene. And every time he would, he would get a glimpse of that murder before, this, before watching the sexual scene. So his brain associated the murder with the sexual content. And it done something to his brain to where that murder started to excite him along with that sexual sin. And notice a Bible story that has... A certain sexual sin and certain sin, uh, type of sinner, specifically sodomites, and they're committing a violent sexual act. In Judges 19.22 it says, Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man, that came into thine house, that we may know him. They want to know him carnally. This is like at Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19, when the men wanted to lay with the angels that came to Lot's house. But then in verse 23 it says, And the man, the master of their house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble you them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine, and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go, so... A man's mind gets so warped and desensitized, the normal sexual acts between a man and his wife no longer satisfied, and he stays on the path of sexual sin until he becomes deranged and animalistic, walking around as a predator, and you're no better than anybody if you keep playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. 
that would be you. You could be like these people. They took this woman, they raped her, they abused her all night. That's a strange and bizarre thing. It's unnatural. But all this sexual sin is warned against in the Bible. It isn't just sodomy. It's bestiality, incest, adultery. It doesn't matter who does it. It doesn't matter if your mother does it. It's wrong. If I do it, it's wrong. If you do it, it's wrong. You say, well, I know a pastor that committed that sin in the past that has absolutely nothing to do with it. You see, people focus too much on who did it instead of realizing God said don't do it. God isn't for it, no matter who's doing it. So they shouldn't do it regardless of who in their life that they see doing it. And they can't say, well, everybody does it, so it's okay for me to do it. Uh, God doesn't work that way. The Bible doesn't work that way. The Bible tells you these things are wrong and that you need to abstain from it. Paul said plainly, abstain from fornication. But if you're not saved, I hope that you'll get saved before it's too late. Paul gives us the gospel. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He died for your sins. You're a sinner, and you know you are. And you need to have them sins paid for because the wages of sin is death. And that's eternal death in the lake of fire if you don't get your sins paid for. So do you want your sins paid for? You need to come to Jesus as the guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel. Come to Jesus and rely on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So I hope that you'll get saved today before it's entirely too late. And if you're saved and you're messing around with all this stuff, the Bible's plain. It says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can have forgiveness of all these things that you've done just come to jesus christ talk to him about it and then try your best just try your best to live right it may be a struggle at first it may be hard but you have to get these things under control but this has been the horrors of sexual sin